we might be live. Give me one second to double check that everything is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, just a second. Running a little bit late tonight. Oh, yep, we are live. Let me check for audio. Yep, we have audio. Okay, let me mute my computer. And we are good. Thanks for the reminder, baby pandas. I'm actually not recording this part tonight because I've got to paint more flowers and I don't need to record all of them. Okay, um, let's see. Let me get my computer set up. The rest of this. Got pop-ups coming up that don't need to be up here. That I don't need. I, if you can't tell, I was running a little, little bit late tonight. I wasn't nearly as ready as I thought I was. Okay, I think we are good. And yeah, that should work. So let's get the right windows up. And there we go. Okay. I have to clean up my palette still. That's a mess. I've still got to draw my image onto the canvas. So just so you know what I'm working on, you can see that this is a photo. This isn't video here um, of what's on my easel, the full thing. Once I start painting, you're only going to see a close up of the feet, not rose. It's not a rose of the white cream colored, whatever flower that I'm going to be working on. Um, let's see. And no, baby pandas, I, well, sort of, yes. I've seen my Houdini snail get out several times. I just haven't figured out how to really put a stop to it without having a custom lid made. Where is my razor blade? There we go. And, uh-oh. I think I see it. There it is. So, yeah, he's, he's still escaping on a regular basis, and I still have to go hunt him down and put him back in the water. Weird snail. Okay, so right now for this palette, this is, I last used this a couple of weeks ago. And so this paint where I've mixed, this is all dry, but a lot of these chunks, that one's dry. That one's semi. Some of these are still really wet. So we're just going to go ahead and scrape some of those up. And I'm, all I'm doing is taking this razor blade. This is a glass palette and it's not locked. There we go. And I just sprayed some water on it, just a little bit. I don't want to make it soaking wet. And now I can scrape all of this off to clean off that area. Is that wet? Oops, that's very wet. You don't want to scrape that one off. That one's wet. That one is not wet. I absolutely love this palette. Of all the years I've been painting, this is by far the easiest to clean and get set up. Like this sort of thing, so much easier than every other setup I've used. Let's see, is that wet? Not wet enough to save. But this paint was already starting to dry out when I was last painting. So it's kind of amazing that so much of this is still, that's still wet, that's still wet, usable. And you don't have to use this brand of glass. I like this one because it's thicker, it's tempered glass, so it's not going to like well, hopefully I won't end up breaking it in a matter that would cut myself if I'm adding as much pressure as I do when I remove the paint. It's a bit blurry. If it's blurry, then that's going to be something with just the video itself because that's an actual image. It shouldn't be blurry. Um, once again, Sir Scooter in a surprise cameo appearance. Yes, it is Sir Scooter again. Oh, I'm going to need to get some more blackout. That is definitely, that was really dry last time. So acrylic paint is just plastic. So I'm, that's all that I'm removing now is plastic from the glass. Um, yep, that's dried off. Okay. I may need, do I need, actually, I don't even know if I need black for this for today. So hopefully I won't have to get up and grab that. So let's just put this to the side. And my next step is to go ahead and do I have, oh good, I have some of the pieces I need are handy. My next step is to go ahead and remove this so you can see the painting I'm working on. I just wanted that one up long enough that you knew what the full scene looked like. Cause I don't think I've, I've, I've posted it um, on, I know those of you on Patreon have seen it, but I don't think I posted this in progress over on Instagram or anything because it's at a really like awkward stage. This is actually all I had planned to add to this painting. But once I got to this stage, I realized it's just missing something. 
like the ending of Game of Thrones. So I wanted to go ahead and add more. I felt like it needed more white to balance things out. And for the room that this is going in, I think it'll look, it'll work out really well. So why did I just remove that? That doesn't even make any sense. I need that. So what I'm going to do is tape my tracing paper. I designed this, I took a photo of the finished painting or where I'm at so far, loaded it into Photoshop, and then I Photoshopped different flowers in to see what kind I thought would look best. And now I just have to line my tracing paper back up with my painting. It doesn't have to be exact, I just need kind of close. And now I'm going to go ahead and take my transfer paper. This one is Low Cornell. I don't like a lot of, I like Low Cornell paintbrushes and I like their transfer paper, not their paints. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this under the flowers that I'm going to work on. And now I take a little stylus, which end do I wanna use here? I just need to lightly go over. And this is going to help to keep my drawing really, really clean. It keeps me from having eraser marks all over if I'm drawing and erasing and moving stuff around. Now I do sometimes just draw straight onto my canvas with a white charcoal pencil and that erases really well too. But in this case, I decided being that I was just piecing things together, it would be easier to make sure everything was where I wanted it by drawing it separately. And I don't need these to be perfect. I just wanna go for close. I mean, even in Photoshop, I pretty much just took the same couple of flowers and rotated them and moved them. Well, maybe there were like six flowers and I just picked from that and moved them all over the place. So I intentionally am going to have to change it from what my reference photo is anyway, so they don't look too much like I'm just drawing the same flower over and over again. And that should give me enough. My tracing paper is unfortunately, or not tracing paper, my transfer paper gets finally, after years of use, starting to get worn out. So I don't see my drawing that well, but good enough that I know the location of those two flowers. And we're only going to work on those two for tonight. I'm going to end up taking flowers all the way across here and it'll cover this cleaner shrimp. The cleaner shrimp just does, he just doesn't look how I wanted him to look. Nothing on this painting right now looks how I want it to. So he's going to get covered. I may or may not put him back in later somewhere else. But that spot, he's just, he's blending in with the background. Things aren't separated. Um, we're we're going to fix this up. Reposition this really quick. And a little bit more. There we go. Phyllis so that's so true on Game of Thrones. Why bother making Jon Snow a Targaryen and then not use it? The same with the others. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's, I felt like it actually, I made a meme. Let's start today with, the, the, not a meme, but here's what my summary. If Game of Thrones were a painting, this is what it would be. Let's just move this on up. There is Game of Thrones as a painting. Like it was just missing pieces. Like they made it so good and then they missed pieces. Like, like they forgot to put the neck on a tiger. That's what Game of Thrones was. So yeah, there's my, um, what I thought of it. Okay, back to painting or starting painting. I guess I'm not back to it because I haven't started. Let me make sure that, that is focused where it needs to be really quick. Yep. Oh, no wonder it's blurry on my end. It's set at 240 here. You can change your quality um, if it's still too blurry for you. Okay. And let's go. Okay, white flowers. My paint that I'm going to be using a lot of unbleached titanium white for the base. I don't wanna to jump to just titanium white for the brightest colors. I don't wanna throw that in there first because if I do, I can't, it's just easier if I kinda of go with a mid range and then add lights on top of that. I'm even gonna tone that down more. Grab these paints. I don't even know what all I'm, I wanted to use on this. I just started grabbing colors and throwing them up on my easel. So this one is going to be my raw sienna. Actually, I think this one is, yeah, this. Um, burnt sienna. I always say raw sienna when I mean burnt sienna. That does not help anyone. There's my raw sienna. Double checking. Okay, and we'll get some violet for the shadows and then I'll need some red so I can make my orange. Caviam said, started this grassy path mountain landscape in acrylic. So great not to worry about color matching as much as I do on portraits. Yeah, it <laughs> that definitely takes away some of the pressure, doesn't it? 
Mia said, how do you decide what type of brush, flat, round, or filbert that you're, you need? I never see you use a fan brush. Any reason why? Oh, yeah. Fan brushes are absolutely useless for almost everything unless you're painting Bob. And I say almost because there are very rare exceptions. If you're painting like a Bob Ross the way he does his trees, a, a, round, a fan brush is useful. But other than that, fan brushes... I wanted to use fan brushes so bad when I started painting and I kept buying them and I kept realizing this brush doesn't do what I think it does. So yeah, I mean, fan brushes have their use. There's, they just for, I mean, obviously no trees here. So not super, super helpful. Um, and yeah, that is why I don't use fan brushes. But for, as far as what other brushes I choose, it's just personal preference. What brush I use may not be the same exact brush someone else will use, and they may get the exact same end results. So it's not like there's you have to pick the perfect brush. Um, in my case, I usually will use filberts because I'm not as likely to end up with harsh start and stop points. Whereas with paintbrushes over here that are not what I need, let's get these out of the way. Um, if I use a, a flat brush, that it's harder to get curves like curved natural mo movements on the edge of a flower and you have these harsh start, start and stop points. So that is my main reasoning there. So let's go ahead pull my water over here. And I'm gonna mix in a little bit of violet and a little bit of the, the raw sienna. Just want this kind of muddy color. I'm gonna throw some, it's too pink. Don't want it to be that pink. I'm gonna start to dry. I just need this to be, well, like I said, muddy. I'm go, this is not going to be the main color I end up with. I just want this as a base so that I can put my lights and my darks go from there. Thanks, baby pandas, but wait till you see when it's finished. You may change your mind. That is way too dark. I looked at this and looked at this, and yeah, it could be called complete, but it's one of those things that I'm like, I'm just not happy with it. It's um, like, I, I know it's missing something and I know I can make it look better. And so I played around with it in Photoshop. And once I added the flowers, it's like, this is what was missing this. I wanted another element that wasn't related to the ocean. It wasn't related to the logos. And I thought the flowers would be a good way to go. And I really like how they looked once I Photoshopped that together. So we'll go around the clarinet. And this is a custom piece. This is for George here on YouTube, um, Coralfish 12 g His little brother plays clarinet, and this painting is for his mom. So we've got the clarinet. We've got the Aquashella logo that you can't see right now. And that's why we've chosen these elements and, of course, the ocean to go with the whole Aquashella thing. Now I need that to be way darker. Let's just go ahead and pull some of that in. And I don't need the perfect color right now. I'm going to layer on top of all of this as we keep, as I start moving on. I just want to get something as a base. Now make sure, if you're going to paint a musical instrument for somebody who plays that instrument especially, make sure you get a decent reference photo and you actually paint it looking like what that instrument looks like. One of the things that happens, and I've seen people do this a lot with violins, they'll paint something and it's missing parts. They've got strings backwards, like the, the G is over where the A or the E is supposed to be. Things um, like that, though, like, because they'll flip it or reverse it. Well, a violin can't be flipped or reversed. So for me, I wouldn't buy a painting. I wouldn't want a painting if it was incorrect. So try to find a reference photo that um, is decent of that instrument that you're you're going to be painting. Because the people who would be interested in buying that painting are going to be the people who probably know what that instrument is supposed to look like. So we'll let that dry. Thanks, Miriam. I think Valerie got busy. Valerie's channel is doing really well. And so I'm pretty sure that she's busy doing hers. I haven't talked to her in a while. Um, how do I decide what type? Okay, I answered that. Perfect. Okay, caught up. So I'm going to let that one set. And actually, I'm not going to jump into this one because I can't see my flower petals really well. We'll just come back over here and I'm going to just one petal at a time work on that. So I actually need a smaller brush than what I just used. This one, now this one has a flat end and I'll probably be using that one quite a bit and around just because it's the size that I need. So while I was saying I don't typically use the, the flat brushes, this one is, is because it is so small, it, I'm going to choose this one just because it's the size I want and it happens to be in front of me. But I could also go with this tiny little filbert that has something stuck on it. That would also be an option, actually. Meh, either one. They're, they're, these ones are close enough. They're so small. It's going to be 
Um, it's fine. Okay. So on this flower, I'm going to have a bit of blue and I've got to be careful not to get the have the blue go too crazy because I don't want it to blend in with the yellows, but I'm going to use this just to start blocking in where my main shadows are going to go. And this is fun because it really doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just using that reference photo as a sort of guideline here. not sitting what is this not sitting even there we go make sure i didn't just move that out of frame here which i may have done and yeah there we go when would i use a filbert opposed to a round personal preference sometimes it's, it's as simple as that filbert's closer to the size that i want or sometimes it's it's sitting closer to me and i'm too lazy to go get the other brush it, it really is personal preference. You're going to get to the point when you paint that you can take almost any brush and make it do what some another brush could. So it, it really does come down to personal preference. But for me, normally um, the filbert is going to be when I want to fill in a larger space than a round, usually. Now it's okay if my my shadows are too harsh here. I'm gonna put so many layers that will tone things down. I just wanna start getting a, an idea of where those shadows and highlights go. And I wanna watch too where I have brush strokes that they're curving in the right direction for that flower or petal. Okay, let's get another shadow. Actually, I'm gonna switch to a bit more raw sienna. Even that is too blue. Let's tone it down by sticking my finger in it so I can see where the shadow is, but it doesn't need to be that blue. Yurim said, you can use turquoise anytime. Favorite of mine, accents. Yeah, mine too. And I'm gonna add blue to this. It's gonna create a bit of a muddy color, but that's really what I need for this shadow. Now where I'm going to have to add the yellow and the orange, I'll have to put a bit of white first. Otherwise, it's not going to really show up over these darker colors. When you first start with your layers, you're going it's going to look really ugly. You're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm just doing a terrible job. This doesn't look like anything. I mean, right now it looks like I painted this with my feet. So with my eyes closed. So he, that's okay. Don't freak out and feel like, oh my gosh, I ruined it. I just need to start over. Totally normal, totally okay. Um, just keep layering until it looks how you want it to. Let's see which, that one comes here. So my shadow should come up a bit higher. And I'll come through and clean up the um, keys on the, the clarinet later. That actually should be more blue. So let me rinse that off. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, like the video, obviously ask questions or comment as you're here. Um, it really helps. Am I ever going to go back into digital painting? Yes. Um, the reason that I've been waiting is my computer got to where I couldn't live stream. And I actually didn't know that to begin with. It never really live streamed well when I was trying to use the digital or the Wacom tablet. So now that I have the new computer, I'm going, I can finally do some of those videos. So yes, I will have some live streaming and then just full digital painting soon. I'm really excited to do some of those. <laughs> Thanks, Miriam. My feet are talented. I pick paintbrushes up off the floor with my feet all the time because I'm too lazy to bend over and pick them up. They, they are useful. Um, I know that's not what you meant, but they have their use. They suck at walking and I fall over everything, so they don't work as intended, but at least they have one use, picking up paintbrushes from the floor. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this 
this dark orangey color. A little bit of unbleached titanium white just to make it opaque enough to stand up and I'll go over it with more orange. Believe it or not, I'm going somewhere with this. Doesn't look like it right now. Okay, we need to let that dry a bit. How do I avoid getting dust on my oil paintings? Um, I mean, I keep one big thing this room is kept very, like I dust, I dust it every week, whether it needs it or not. So I don't have a lot of dust in this room. Now, if chicken has been in here, because cockatiels, if you are familiar with them, they have this white powder that covers their feathers. And so when he floofs up, he gets dust everywhere. He can't come in here when I've oil painted anyway, because the oil, the paint fumes are not good for him. But like he, even if the paint fumes weren't good for him, I would not bring him in during that time, knowing that would create dust. You just have to be aware of when there's dust. Like if my painting is wet, I am not going to vacuum because that can kick stuff up into the Air. I'm not going to dust while wet painting is sitting on my easel. That needs to dry. Now, my the paint that the liquid that I use is a fast drying medium, my mixing medium. So it is going to set overnight and dust is not going to stick to it. And that makes a really, really big difference. The type of, you know, if it has to set for a week to dry, you're, if it's really wet, you're just opening yourself up to more and more opportunities for dust to stick to that. So for me, it's only overnight. So I just make sure during that time, like I said, my studio, my whole house is dusted every week. But beyond that, I do not vacuum while I've got a wet painting on the easel. I don't um, dust the room while a wet painting is on the easel. I don't shake out like my bathroom carpet or my bathroom is right near my studio. So I wouldn't like shake out those rugs in here or in there. I would Anything that's going to kick things up, I don't do. So trying to keep the area as clean as you can. And I think that that can be hard too, because a lot of people think studio, let it be messy. But you're seeing one of the problems. Now I'm not saying that you're messy. I'm just saying I've seen where people worked in like a garage where there was sawdust all over and that's going to get kicked up and stick. So, you know, watching those things. But I think one of the biggest reasons that I don't have to deal with, with the dust being a problem is that I'm using a mixing medium that's cre causing the paint to dry super, super fast. So that's, that's, I guess, what I do. I'm not saying it's going to work in every situation because I know certain areas, like I've lived places where it was so windy and because there was so much open land, there was just dust would get in the house, like dirt everywhere all the time. So it's going to depend on your situation. Um, I And definitely the liquid helps. But yeah, trying to prevent the dust from hitting there, that in the first place and, and figuring out what's causing it. Like, is it because you opened a certain door? If it's windy outside or dusty, I can't open my window or the, the sliding door during while I've got a wet painting. Stuff like that you want to avoid. I don't know if that's helpful at all. Probably not. Um, let's see. Was that a two-headed brush? How useful. It was. And they discontinued them. It was a Hobby Lobby generic. And it's super damaged. I've had this thing for probably 10 years. And I wish they still made them because I've not found another one that I like nearly. It, it was a three-pack with different sizes, a flat on one side and a round on the other. And they don't make them anymore, unfortunately. And mine are super damaged now. Um, what medium do I perform more, oil or acrylic? It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing an, a portrait, hands down oil. If I'm doing something like this with a lot of little details and layering that I'm going to do acrylic just because it's faster. Um, let's see. Nick can turn doorknobs with his feet. I feel somewhat less talented about my ability to pick up paintbrushes now. And let's see. Yeah, that really makes my feet seem feel um, lesser. There's another word I'm thinking of and I can't right now or it's not popping in my head. Let's see. Octavia said, are you a fan of painting clouds? Any tips for a beginner? Get a reference photo. And I know that sounds weird, but a lot of times um, what happens is people think it's a cloud. I know what a cloud looks like. 
and they try to paint from their brain and it looks like fluffy potatoes instead of clouds. Get a reference photo and try copying the shapes and look at it as abstract shapes. Don't look at it as I'm painting clouds because if you do, your brain tries to take over and is like, huh, it's not going to be clouds when I'm done. So definitely get a reference photo and, and work by copying the shapes and shadows and look at the shadows in the clouds. A lot of people think, oh, it's clouds. It's just going to be solid white. No, really not. It, it usually, unless your camera overexposed it or it's super, super bright, usually look at the shadows of the clouds. That's going to make a big, big difference. Kelly said, save the cleaner shrimp. I loved it so much. I may add him somewhere else because there's a few places on this painting that he would fit in. Um, but he's just blending into that background. He's just there for the sake of being there. And he does. He, he's not. I didn't do a good job at all. Um, Vladimir said, I know you previously mentioned how you love Weber's from Alba Black and White. How densely opaque are they compared to, for instance, Windsor and Newton artist colors? So much more opaque. Like it's not even comparable. Like the difference is huge. Blue Tea Art said, would you ever make a review of the, I don't, something colored pencils? I've never heard of them. I don't, I can't say if I would or I wouldn't. If they are one of the, the ones you see so often where it's just the cheap stuff from China, like they're, they just keep repackaging the same pencil from, from one company to another. It's all the same crap. If it's that, then probably not. Um, I don't want to keep reviewing what are essentially children's paints because my focus is more for those who are, are looking to be professionals or to get their, even if they don't want, you don't want to be a professional who just want to improve your work and using a lot of the cheaper products. Um, not usually the best way to do that. So it depends. I'll have to look into it and see what they are, but if it's just more of what we're seeing, so like the art Zaya and all the, the cheap um, Chinese stuff, I'm not really interested in those products. So those I'm not going to, I, I definitely prefer to, to review more professional, higher quality, um, products. Let's see. Funny said, maybe I will make my own. Love that. I'm on a different part of a conversation and I don't remember what we were talking about. There's, there's always such a delay here and it makes me seem super confused. Miriam said, don't know why stores do that. Oh, the brushes. That's where we are. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Make your own. Um, they get us liking a product, then they just continue them. I wonder if people just weren't buying them. I don't know. They were amazing. Rachel said, I think, think the word you are looking for is inferior. Yes, that is the exact word. Thank you, Rachel. Tasha said, I've been experimenting with painting on a tablet, just got the Galaxy Tab. Any tips for an app? or the sensitive pens that can be used to maximize its potential, thanks in advance. The Galaxy, the one that I use, the tablet, came with a pen. So I don't know as far as anything besides that, but for apps, Art Rage is my absolute favorite. Uh, Miriam said, my feet can find the edge of table legs, ouch. <laughs> that hurts. Um, but also a little talented, talented there. Paul said, I'm going to do a portrait. Would you recommend Frederick's Belgium linen panel or Frederick's blue cotton canvas? I like a smooth surface to work on. I'll be using oil. Either work. My absolute favorite are the oil prime Belgian linen. If you're using oil, that's my favorite favorite. But either are going to really work very, very well for you. I think it depends partially on how much money you want to spend. I prefer the Belgian linen, but I can make my the blue label work just fine. Like I don't have a problem doing portraits on blue label either. Like I don't, I don't have any complaints. So I think it comes down to, in this case, how much you, you are wanting to spend on it. And one of the things that you can do too, if it's something that you're doing for a client, let them choose. Tell them that you can work on either one and let them know that there's a price difference for the Belgian linen. I'm not worrying about blending here. I'll be glazing over things and I can, can soften things out as I need to later. Right now, I'm just kind of mapping things out. And right now I'm using a round brush. This is an artist loft. So it's a generic um, paint brush, just a round. Vladimir said, I know your previous videos, you use a mop brush to blend out oil paints. Is it synthetic or natural or mixed? It's synthetic. So what I'm doing right now is mostly drawing with the paint. I don't care if my colors are right. I just kind of want to figure out where my lights and darks are going to go. Can 
come on, wake back up, computer. I'm going to change the settings. This one wants to go to sleep constantly. Oh, and it made my image shrink down. That was annoying. There we go. Now I can see what I'm doing. And I don't care if my petals, like I said before, are in the exact right place. I can correct all, well, it doesn't need to be because it's a flower, but I mean, I can go back and adjust anything and anywhere. Now, if I were working on a portrait, then things need to be exact. Then I need to be careful and really worry about every line, everything that I'm doing being in the right place. That's one of the fun things with flowers. They do not need to be exact. Close really is good enough. Ursi said, are you going to do outdoor watercolor painting video this year, you did, like you did the one with ink tents. I really enjoyed last year's enjoying yourself with a colored sketch using water. I should, I need to. The weather's actually been really nice, so I really do need to get out onto our local trail and, and make a video. This time bring more water. I didn't bring water last time or enough of it, so I couldn't paint as long as I wanted to out there. But yeah, I really should. Do I like the Artist Loft or Masters? Masters touch hands down. Um, as far as paintbrushes go, really like those a lot, a lot better. This is, um, this feels, the Artist Loft feels generic, like a generic brush to me, whereas the Masters touch don't. They just feel like a, a quality brush. So that's, yeah, absolutely prefer Masters touch. I mean, these are usable, but the, I don't like like the spring in the brush or lack thereof, not my favorite. Vladimir said, if you like the fluidity of the Liquitex Basics paints, why don't you use the more fluid paints they have, not the super fluid ones with the soft body? Because they're, they dry with a gloss that I don't like. It's not just the fluidity of these that I like. It's that they are, they tend to be more translucent, which for me with the, the glazing that I do, I have the soft body paints here. I use them for, for pouring, um, but for actually painting, they, they're a little bit too opaque and then they dry with a, a high gloss that I don't like because then I can't go back on top and easily, the charcoal pencil kind of works, the tracing paper kind and transfer paper method kind of works, but not as well as the flat. Plus the flat, like this with the, the Liquitex Basics, photographs so much easier. And I just put a high gloss on it when I'm, I'm finished. Why did I make the shadows of the droplets maroon? So that they stood out. It's a surreal piece. I've got maroon in other areas of the painting, and I just liked how it looked. Personal preference there. It's one of the things that I like when working surreal. It's really easy when you're used to painting things super realistic to not want to think outside the box or try different things. And sometimes when you do surreal things, that's one of the things I like. I'm choosing things based on, I think this is going to look cool versus this is how it really should look. Um, how would I ship an original 16 by 20 watercolor paper rolled in a tube or flattened with a secure board? Rolled in a tube, it depends on the paper. If the paper's super thick, then I'm gonna go flat in multiple layers of cardboard, like tons of layers of cardboard, because you just wanna go ahead and assume it's gonna get bent, that somebody's gonna hit it, hit the box. So I'll usually do lots of card cardboard and then inside an actual cardboard box. So that has worked out well for me. But if it's, um, if it's a paper that you can roll, the tube has always seemed safer to me. Now, it's also not going to be super, super uh, impressive to the buyer when they open up a painting rolled up in a tube compared to if they open something that you can mat. If you do the 16 by 20 flat, you can mat it and it's going to be much more impressive to them when they open it up. It doesn't cost you that much to add the mat. So I prefer the mat as far as how it's going to look when, when the buyer opens it, if I really want them to be impressed. But that tube, there's sometimes that tube just feels so much safer. Am I going to use any mediums or just water for acrylic? I just use water. I don't like most mediums. There are exceptions sometimes when I'm like glazing grapes or trying to get something to look really translucent. But for the most part, I prefer water. Actually, I need to go a little bit darker here. Let's pull some of the unbleached titanium white. And if I'm not answering your question, make sure you, you're highlighting doing the Outlaw Cree Fine Art. If your question doesn't highlight in orange, I'm probably not going to see it. It's not that I'm intentionally ignoring you. I'm just not seeing the question. So make sure that comes up um, that way.
Yeah, this brush is way too soft. Not working for me. And that one is, it's a white tap on. It's um, way too bendy. I could use this, I think, more for ink tents or something like that. I think that's what I'm going to put it to the side for. But I'm, I'm done with that one for acrylic. It is not, not making me happy. Uh, I do need a different round, though. One second, I need to find a different brush. Container. Let me find it. Where? Maybe one is under here. Do I have one hiding? No. Let's see. Thanks, Rachel. Melanie said, are you able to, to show us your flower photo reference? It's for, I don't have it on this computer. So unfortunately, no, it's from, um, where did I get this one? Pixabay. I should have put the, put it on the computer. I didn't think of that far ahead. None of these brushes are really super amazing for what I'm looking for. I guess I could just use a liner. I've got to have something. Actually, I think these are for oil. Let me see if I've got another. I've got so many brushes down here. Okay, those are definitely oil. That's not going to work. Mercy said, I like the orange on the octopus. Looks dimensional, major 3D to the background. I've never seen that before. I love the contrast, light orange playing on the shadows of the background. Thank you. Yeah, the in the blue, when you put the orange and blue next to each other, they're complementary colors, so they really pop when you stick them next to each other. This one's close. That one might work. It's so funny. I always have round brushes out and I, I don't know where all of mine are. I only grabbed the one for some reason. I guess those will have to do. Okay. So I'm going to, let's see. Let's go ahead and start getting some of the brighter oranges. I'm just going to go right on top of these. Miriam said, I've painted abstract and realistic before, but you're inspiring me to try surreal. You should do it. Have you tried to paint? Bonnie said, have you tried paint my photo? I have, and I don't use their photos anymore because they've got a lot of rule, like a lot of rules on, you can't use this for digital painting. You can't use this for, if you're going to make a video, you have to get permission from the photographer first. If you're going to, and I'm like, what? too many rules just can I use the photo or can I not use the photo as I want to? So for me, um, it's just not a suitable, I, I I'm not going to. They also had a problem, and I mean, anywhere can have this, including Pixabay. But I know they had had a problem where there was a photo. I know one I used. Um, the person who uploaded it did not have rights. It wasn't her photo. She was lying about it. And yeah, that was an issue. But I mean, that's not paint my photo's fault. When they found out about it, they removed it. But it's like between that and um, I mean, one of the reasons that I, I was leaning towards using it is I felt a bit safer on copyright, but they're having that issue too, like Pixabay would anyway. And Pixabay, I don't have to worry about if I want to use it in a digital painting. And it just kind of, it, it just irritated me with the whole, you can't use our war, any photos off here for digital. Like it's still art. It's still, I guess that's where I was just getting like, I don't know, a little bit of personal being offended of digital painting is still painting. So why wouldn't I be able to like, that's, it's weird that you have, a, you won't let people use it on certain mediums. So um, I don't want to try to keep up with whatever rules. And then they changed something. I think they had changed it. So you had to get permission from the artist or, or the photographer to use, you know, like how I do with when I make the paintings and something else. And I can't remember what it was. And it was like, you know what? This is just not the site for me anymore. The very nice people, nothing against them. It's just that it wasn't a good, you know, the best fit. There are other alternatives that fit me better for what I was looking for. Oh, 
okay, I have got to fix this computer. It continue. It apparently is, oh, it didn't, that, okay, we're okay. Um, it keeps going to sleep. I, I haven't changed the settings on, on it yet, and it's putting itself to sleep constantly. So this color, I've just mixed blue, I mixed this golden color, mixing a bunch of these colors to start darkening up. Now that I'm getting in, I've got that base of which petals are which, I can start paying attention to what is light and dark, or what it, all of the individual petals. Now it starts coming together and it's easier for me to, to tackle. I know what goes where. Um, let's see. Thanks, Ursies. Vladimir said, I don't know if you said this before, but how long do you wait to varnish an oil painting? I know there's that six month roll, but what if you're using an oil dryer like Liquid and Liquid Deal? Detail. Um, if you're using like a normal varnish, that would, you still have to wait a long time, but I use Gam, um, Gambar. It's the same makers who make Gamsol, which is the, the paint thinner. That one is amazing. And as soon as the painting is dry to the touch, like the wettest, thickest part of your painting, as soon as it's dry to the touch, you can varnish it. So that's what I use. It gives you a nice high gloss and I don't have to wait six months. So, cause I mean, it's hard when you sell a painting, most people, most buyers don't want to wait six months to get their painting. So you could have them send it back for you to varnish. Most aren't going to do that. Uh, you know, shipping paintings is a pain. So yeah, the Gambar is the only one that I use now to varnish my paintings. And then I don't have to wait six months. So that stuff is, am and it, it's amazing. It's a great varnish. I actually had someone, it was funny. I had a video using it and they came on into that video and were arguing, no, you still have to wait six months. And I'm like, the label itself, well, I call, called them and they told me you still have to wait. And I'm like, the label, I'm following the directions on the label. You are misreading that, which is kind of funny. It's always funny to me when people argue about stuff before really researching it, but they think they research, like misunderstood the product. I don't know if you thought it was a different product. I don't know. It was funny. But no, that stuff is really good. And, and again, you just have to wait for it to be dry to the touch. Um, let's see. Bonnie said, I understand that. I'm glad you introduced me to Pixabay. Yeah, Pixabay, I really, really like. Because you're not going to have the rules on it. And now, and like I said, Pixabay can have the same problem where somebody uploads something they don't actually have rights to. So that sucks. You're always taking a risk. If you didn't take the photo yourself, you you know, there's always that risk. But at least I don't have to worry about breaking rules with, you made a video out of it or you, you um, made a digital painting and we don't like digital art for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because digital art, it's easier to make it look super realistic and so... I don't know. I really don't know. Then there was one, actually, the thing that really pushed me over the edge on that one, that site, is I was contacted. And it, again, it wasn't the moderator's fault. Someone reported me for having done something with the image I wasn't supposed to. And I forget what it was. I th oh, they claimed that I posted the original on Facebook. And I didn't. And I, it was some misunderstanding. I don't know if they, I don't remember what the details were. If it was that my stuff looked realistic and they thought it was their photo or I don't know. But it was like, I'm not even dealing with this anymore. And again, not the moderator's fault. Um, I want to be clear with that. The people, all the people who run Paint My Photo have been so nice to me. I really liked everyone I've talked to. It's just that I don't have time to wait and get, like if I choose a photo, I want to start painting tonight. I can't wait to find out, oh, can I make a, is it okay if I make a video with this? Maybe some people can and that's fine, but I cannot. So there were just too many negatives for me. It just doesn't, not suitable for, for what I do. Most people, I'm sure it's fine for it though. Um, scroll too far here. Renee said, thank you for showing your modification of a painting you were not happy with. You're welcome. Thank you for sticking around and watching. Kimberly said, could you explain the theme of the painting and pan out so I could see the entire thing, please? Yeah, actually, let me show you again. I'll pull this up a couple of times tonight. Um, if anyone missed it, here is what I have so far of the painting. Where did it go? Here's the painting so far. Well, minus the flowers that I'm painting in. This is being done. It's a surreal piece. It's got the Aquashella logo again. It's for one of the two guys who runs Aquashella. And the symbolism is Aquashella logo because that's something that's really important to him. The clarinet, which is his brother plays clarinet. This is a painting that he wanted for his mom. So, and of course the ocean. But the, the challenge on this one is that the painting needs to match. His mom is very... Um, picky about how she did like her house is beautiful he sent me pictures and it's like wow that room is gorgeous I get why she's picky but the colors are hard to mix with ocean with the blues and I'm like this is kind of hard to get the neutral tones along with um, these elements so it's been a bit of a challenge there but that's what this one is 
And then back to my, what currently is a muddy, muddy flower. Breaking foundation said, I finally decided to build my own reference photo for a Minotaur. It's so much fun. I should have tried it sooner. Any tips for making sure the shadows on the reference match? You, um, there we go. There we go. Um, try, I mean, try to find pictures where the reference photo, it does have a similar light source, but some of it you're just going to have to make up as you go along. When you find different, different, um, photos like that when you're putting it together I and luckily there are enough like paint my photo you're there's so many options for most things that there's a good chance you can find reference photos with the, the same or similar in, um, lighting but sometimes you just kind of have to make that up as you go along I know that's not helpful but that's just what we have to do sometimes so see how I'm just kind of slowly building up lightning areas This brush I like. This one is a Simply Simmons. These, I um, most art stores have them, but usually the when I go to Michael's, they have the biggest selection of these. These are nice brushes. I really, really, really like them. Just a reminder, if I am not seeing your question, make sure you're you're doing the at law Cree fine art. If it doesn't highlight in orange, I'm not going to see it. If you have trouble getting that to work, you can ask one of the moderators to repost the question for me so that I'll see it then or for you so that I'll see it. And so when you're drawing flowers, what I recommend doing, look at your reference photo and look at it as abstract shapes. Don't try to look at it and have your brain going, I'm drawing a flower because right now that does not look like a flower. This looks like a horrible accident gone wrong. Um, so, but try to, to think of it as a, a, an abstract. Where are your lights? Where are your darks? Look at that reference photo. One of the things you can do too is flip it upside down. Sometimes that'll help your brain to see what's there and not what it thinks is there. I do that a lot. Just lighten this up a bit for the inside and then I'll glaze over it because this is still going to be too light. But actually part of this isn't light enough. I lied. This is an 18 by 24 inch. And thank you, Molly. Okay, I need to get some of this. Now I'm gonna start color correcting a little bit. Like this is, is quite a bit too dark. I need this bluish tone. Cause it's gonna be picking up the dark around it. And yeah, well, let's see if we can balance this out a bit using some cobalt blue. You know what I need is some transparent mixing white. Give me one second. And using the transparent mixing white, what this is going to do is allow me to lighten the color without adding a bunch of opacity to it. So it'll still stay transparent, but it will lighten it up a bit, which is good for glazing. Now, because this is going to be fairly translucent, I'm still going to see the muddy color underneath it. I'm just lightening it. It's going to soften all of this out. And I can go over the highlight and just pull that highlight back in and this will, again, soften things out. This is much, much better now. You're just going to keep building and layering until it looks how you want. When you hit those ugly stages, don't give up and think you ruined it. Just keep layering. Now 
Now, one of the big lessons here is that th this is a white flower. Very little white is actually used. It's going to reflect what's around it. It's going to pick up those colors. The only time you're going to see like a white, white is usually if it's like super bright, camera's overexposed, something went wrong there. Um, but normally you're going to have it picking up a lot of other colors. And that's where a lot of people have trouble making white things look three-dimensional. It's that they're missing all of the, the other colors that need to be in there. <laughs> Thanks, Miriam. Yeah, you know what? The octopus, like the lion, that would be really cool. Um, I love painting those guys, so that's a really good idea. Am I planning to completely hide the shrimp's antenna? Yeah, that's going to get all covered up. Um, it'll show, but because the flower only comes to here, so I'll have to cover that um, probably with other flowers or put the shrimp in there, but it, you know, sitting on top of the flowers. I've, I'll have to figure that one out. That's definitely a problem that I'm going to have to, to come up with a solution for. There are a few things I can do. But see, as I layer, I can start softening this out slowly. So my edges aren't so harsh. Remember, it's not a paint by number. You're not just trying to put the right color in the right location. That usually isn't going to look very good. And this is why I like the Liquitex Basics so much. Well, this one's the transparent mixing white, so it is. this one's transparent anyway, or more translucent. But your colors, most of these colors are fairly translucent. And some people don't like that because they can't get those bold, rich colors. Well, I want it to be translucent because of the way I layer. So this is one of the huge reasons I love these. And you can always make other colors, you know, thin them, thin them with um, mixing mediums, but this just works out of the bottle really well for, you know, I thin it with a bit of water, but they work really well. Uh, Molly said, how are my pets going? Everybody is doing good. I added a new fish yesterday, so that's fun. Um, Starving Artist Collective said, Texas has a hot climate. Yes. How do you slow the acrylics drying on the palette? Mine dry in an instant makes getting the same mix nearly impossible. Um, well, this is, well, no, that's not dry. I just got that wet. This part's starting, this part's dry where I was mixing. So I, I paint fast, but we're also humid, so that helps. Um, the paint that you use is going to make a big difference. Liquitex Basics, I find, doesn't dry as fast. Liquitex Heavy Body, oh my gosh, that stuff dries almost as soon as it hits the palette. It's really bad as far as how, how quickly that stuff dries. But I find that the Liquitex Basics does dry a little bit slow, more slowly. But like all these little patches that I'm mixing paint, that does dry fast. That's just the nature of the paint. Um, so I'm constantly remixing more. But the type of paint may make a difference for you. Okay. Let's start pulling these oranges. And actually, I grabbed a bright orange to add to my palette here. They had a bunch of colors at, they must be discontinued, but they had some different colors at Hobby Lobby that were clearanced. So I picked up a couple of those. I'm going to brighten that orange up quite a bit. And see, the oranges with Liquitex Basics, super translucent. So I've got to be putting that on top of a, a light color in order for it to show up. But it works so well as a glaze. I've got to lighten a lot of these up. But it's so much, I, at least with acrylics, I find a lot of times it's easier to get the darks in and then come back and add the lights. And that's not always the case, but at least with these, it usually is. Now, I'm really excited. We picked out a new house. Uh, well, yeah, new, it's not built yet. I bought a pot of dirt, but the, my backyard will be a cool size so I can plant, put the plants and stuff. When all of that's done, which, you know, we're talking later next year, but I can actually go paint outside and get some videos out there. So that's going to be fun. That'll give me a bit more variety on where I can paint. It'll be nice to set up there until the wind kicks in and I get angry and go inside or bugs. Frankie Foundation said, ha ha, thanks. I use Pixabay for his piece. Should I pick one part of the mashup and try to match all the shadows to that? I'm making it like you made your Surreal Octopus reference. Yeah, just pick one, pick a, an area that you want the light source. But also don't, and this is a mistake that I made for years. Um, and I still occasionally catch myself doing it. I used to have this idea, you pick one light source 
usually there's not one light source. I mean, this room alone, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different light sources in this room. Now they're going to be different. Some are gonna be brighter, like the one here is obviously the brightest. That's gonna be, the further away the light is, it's going to be more dim. But you may have an area where there's a light highlight on the opposite side of where something is. And so keep that in mind too. Don't think, okay, everything on this side is bright and everything on this side is heavy shadow. Usually something will be reflecting on the shadowed area, at least a little bit. Watch that. There's a book, is it James Gurney? I have it, can I see it from here? Um, Color and Light. Yeah, Gurney, I believe, is his name. There's a book called Color and Light. Get That one is one of the books that I do recommend people pick up. They have it on Amazon. I don't think that was very expensive. But that's a really, really helpful book for just kind of talking about light and understanding shadows and how things should fit together. And he is an absolute master with light. But I always used to do that. It's like, here's my highlight side, here's my shadowed side, and that's it. And that's not natural. Most, it, it is rare to have a single highlight in any room or like setting. Because sometimes too, you can have, let's say you're outside. Well, yeah, you've only got one light source, the sun. But it's going to bounce off the ground and reflect more dimly over here. It, the light kind of bounces all over. So watch for that when you're looking at reference photos. Have I tried slow drying Alti Altier paints? I have not. I don't, if those are the acrylic ones you're talking about, I think I have some here. I just haven't tried them yet. I don't want slow drying acrylics. I like that they blend fast. I paint fast. So I paint as fast as I talk. It's perfect. But I don't, I'm not looking for a slower way to dry them. If it's drying too fast for me, I just use my airbrush and mist water on the canvas. And that allows me to keep it wet for as long as I need without gunking up the paint. I don't like um, the texture, like the slow drying mediums. I don't like how it makes the paint feel. It changes the consistency to something I, I personally do not like. Uh, some people love them. I There's nobody that I know where I've looked at their paint. Now, to be fair, if you give a good artist any painting material or painting supply, they're going to make something pretty. But there's nobody who uses that consistently that I look at their work and think, God, I wish mine looked like that. So that's kind of my determination on whether or not I want to try certain supplies. And I've never seen any that I'm like, that's the best I've ever seen. That's what I want to use, if that makes sense. Um, yes, Gail, I am staying in Texas. We will stay, we're actually just moving a bit north of where we're at now. But yes, we'll be in the general same area. Baby Panda said, how exciting on your new home. Congratulations, do you have your house plans yet? Um, we do, we picked out one that we like and it, I'm so excited. I'm gonna have both a studio, a big studio. It's 17 by 11 feet, I think. So it's a good size just for the studio. And then right now my office is in my studio. I'm gonna have a separate office um, which is gonna be great for editing video. And I'm gonna put my clownfish in there so I can watch them while I'm editing video. And yeah, super excited about that setup. I'm gonna have so much more workspace. It was a little bit more of a challenge finding the right house just because, we, you know, it's only me and my husband, but we're, I needed enough space for work. So that was, was the thing. And we found what I think is gonna be the absolute perfect house for us. So yeah, very, very excited. And it has lots of windows for my plants and the main windows face south. So that's like perfect. I get more plants in the house. I get to have plants in my studio now. Really excited about that. So yes, my, my studio and my office will both get enough light to get plants. So, so, so happy. Um, let's see. Now here, there are areas of this flower that are blending in where I don't want, so I'll have to come back through with and define the shadows a bit better. Kimberly said, please, are the reddish droplets reflecting furniture in the room? Sorry if you explained. Coming to you later. The octopus is amazing. Thank you. Um, They're not, yes and no. They work with the piece. It's surreal. The thing when you do surreal paintings, you don't have to follow any rules. You can paint something a color because you think that color will look the best. You don't want to be so wrapped up. I think if you're too hooked on, I need to make it look exactly like my reference photo, it's going to make it more of a challenge for you to paint surreal stuff. You are... 
the fish don't swim out of a frame. Fish don't do, well, I mean, if they do, they're not going to be doing it for long. So unless it's my snail who comes out of the tank all the time and apparently is going to keep living, but you're, you, you can break the rules. You're not following a set of rules. I mean, to an extent with lighting and stuff, you're going to follow it so that it looks nice. But in this case, it was just a matter of what colors do I want to use for that? I think that magenta color would look nice. I've got that in the octopus. It's going to balance it out. Well, that's why I went with that. Um, let's see. Miriam said, have you ever painted or in color pencils, a beaked coral fish? The picture I'm using right now seems to show an orange color in it. Trying to get it right. Beaked coral fish. What is a beaked coral fish? Hold on. I can't remember off the top of my head what that is. Oh, don't autocorrect for me. Oh, that's just a copper banded butterfly. Is that what's showing up as a beaked coral fish? I call them copper banded butterflies. I've painted tons. If we're talking about the same one, common names can be mixed up. Um, but if we're talking about, if you look up what a coral um, or a copper banded butterfly. I painted lots and lots and lots and lots of those guys. They're one of my favorite. Those and Moorish idols are probably firefish, um, hippo tanks. I paint a lot. Those are probably some of my, and clown triggers, probably all my favorites to paint. But yes, I have painted tons of those guys. And recently too, I've got some videos with them. Um, let's see. Did I miss anything here? When you layer oil paint over acrylic, do you just glaze oil colors, paint in acrylic, and just do the final details with oils? Working on a surreal tiger, thanks. It depends on what I'm doing, but yeah, I mean, most of the layers with oil, I don't do super thick. Otherwise, what's the point of the acrylic if I'm just going to completely cover it? I let, I typically let it show through a bit. Um, but yeah, that's mostly glazes. Some paint, as I get to the final layers, will be a bit thicker with the oils, but not that much. Octavia said, on your first live stream, you showed your paint puck and I ordered one of, whoops, that just scrolled out of there. Where did that go? And I ordered one the same night. Pretty good brush cleaner. I was, was one using a brush tub. Yeah, those paint pucks there. I've got one. If you guys don't know what, where is it? Oh, here he is. I'm not using it tonight because I needed a bigger one, but this is the paint puck. These you can get on Amazon. The company, just for transparency, they sent this to me to review and I just haven't made it. I haven't made a dedicated video, so I've shared it a few times. You can see it's filthy because I actually use it a lot. It's got the inside of it, like the, um, an area where you can brush, wash your brushes through there. I like that it's rubber, so it's not sliding around like my normal water well. If I put much pressure on it, it kind of slides on my TV trays. This won't, and it's small. The only thing on this one that is like kind of useless, it's got these little hooks that I guess you're supposed to be able to put your paint brushes in like this, which I would not recommend. Do. I mean, yeah, you can do it. I guess if they were dry, it'd be fine, but if your paintbrush is wet, you don't want a wet brush setting like this because the water will run down into the barrel and can loosen up the glue, can damage the brush, and you wouldn't want it upside down because it's going to fray it sitting that way. But other than that part, that's the only thing I don't use on that. It's got this like squeegee area. So when your paintbrush is wet, let's say you were, you rinse it out, you can pull it into these little squeegee areas on the inside ring. This thing is actually really, really cool. And it's, I want to say it's like around $20-ish. I don't remember the actual price, but it's really pretty cool. So I don't have this linked, but if you just look up paint puck on Amazon, really handy little um, brush cleaners. And they have other colors. I think they've got a dark blue and then that red. Um, let's see. Whoops. <coughs> Thanks, Erseys. Is there a schedule for these live streams? Or are they spontaneous? They are Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Almost every Wednesday. Um, let's see. Buzz said, have you ever tried painting on mugs? If so, what paint would you use that would last? No, I can't give you any tips because I've never done it. I'm not sure on that one. I'm sorry. Um, AJ said, I just finished an acrylic desert scene and I can't get a deeper feel to it. The plants 
developed from close to far, but because of the sand, the desert loses that 3D feel. Uh, I'd have to see it posted over in our art group. The link is in the video description. Post it over there and we can have some artists take a look at it. But without seeing it, it's hard for me to give you advice on that. I mean, generally, if I'm painting a sand scene, I'm going to use a lot, a lot of purple or desert scenes, a lot of purple for my shadows. I don't know that that helps you, but I'd have to kind of, you know, we'd need to see it to give you any tips. So um, our, a link should be in the description of our art group. You could post there. Make sure you follow the rules before you post, though. Like, put multiple or put description on, on each images or they don't get approved. We've been having... Lots of problems with that lately. Um, and don't block moderators. That's been a thing lately. Although one of them was a weird glitch. But I found a bunch of people had me blocked. Like, why are you in my group if you're just going to block me? Well, it's spammers mostly. But anyway, um, Breaking Foundation said, thank you so much. It, that was helpful. Light sources always freak me out. I'm always nervous. This, the shadow I have to make up are wrong. You know, the funny thing is I found, because that's something that always concerned me too, most people aren't going to notice that it's wrong. Most of my stuff is wrong. And it doesn't mean that it's not still pretty. I mean, you want to go for close. But I can't say that my stuff's all correct at all. At all. Go for close. And it, like I said, when you're you're having to make it up, you're just kind of guessing. So go for close. Go for what you where you think it would be. And I think the more you paint, that's the big thing. The more you paint, it's going to start making sense where a shadow should go. It's almost like you just ne you start to instinctually know where you should put a shadow or where it would look right. But that's going to come with time. You're probably, if you're a new artist, you're not going to get it right right now. That's fine. But the more you paint and, and paint from good reference photos, that's, you know, do that as well. So in addition to doing the surreal stuff, make sure that you're copying some reference photos where you're trying to copy exactly. You're going to learn a lot from light by copying like fully copying realistic photos. So even if surrealism is your goal, I still recommend do some photorealism, like just completely copy that photo to give yourself a good understanding of the light. You're going to understand it more and read books. Like I said, that book from James Gurney, I want to say it's James Gurney and I apologize if I'm getting his name wrong. Gurney, it's called, where is it? Color and Light. Um, those help, but a lot of it is just the more you paint and paint things realistically, the more that that's going to just start to come natural to you. But at first it's going to feel weird and you're probably going to get it wrong. It doesn't matter. It's still going to be pretty. And that should help. Uh, whoops. Baby Panda said, I just looked up the paint book. Oh, they're even cheaper. That's cool. Thanks, Sherry. Oz said, any tips for learning or practicing color theory. That's kind of the same thing I was just saying with the light. The more you paint, the more it's going to make sense. So you can read books on color theory right now. There's plenty of books. There's plenty of free online um, blogs and such that talk about color theory. I need to do some videos with that. But really, it comes, the more you paint, the more you draw, it's going to make more sense. So you can read all the books in the world. But if you've not been painting a whole lot, a lot of the color theory isn't totally going to make sense until you hit the canvas and then it's like that thing that you read. It's like, oh, that's what they were talking about. But it, you've got to come. You want to combine that with with that. But no, I don't have any actual books that I can can list for that. Well, the color and what is it? Gosh, I'm just like pimping that book tonight. Um, the color and light. Gurney is the author on that one. And that's a really good one. But as far as like color theory, color theory. Make sure that you're not just trying to, if you try to study it on its own, most people are just going to be confused. Like, what the heck is it talking about? But if you, if you read stuff like that while you're also painting and paying attention to the art and, you know, practicing at the easel, that'll start making a lot more sense to you. But a lot of this just comes down to experience. If you just read the books, it won't make enough sense. And the other thing, just go paint something ugly. That is probably one of the most helpful things for you to learn to paint well is paint some ugly things. Not, I mean, you're not trying to make them ugly, but they come out that way when you're first learning. That's normal. Just go paint, go make something ugly and don't stress out about every little thing needing to be perfect. You'll learn more from those mistakes than reading a million books where it doesn't really sink in because you've not experienced why why you want to do things those way. If you go and make a bunch of mistakes and then go read a book that explains why that mistake happened and how to prevent it, now what that book is going to make so much more sense than had you never made the mistake on your own. Mistakes are, are one of the best things you can, you know, that's going to help you learn more. Miriam said, I'm real fancy. I use a plain old water, water buckets. Hey, you know, that works. Or like, um, mason jars work really well too. You know, that's one of the things with that paint puck 
they have these little individual, I don't think I have any sitting in front of me. I've got them somewhere, but there's these, these little ones with a suction cup on the bottom. You can stick at the bottom of a cup or a, a, uh, what are they? The, okay. I really have to fix this on the computer when we're done here. Um, that, that sleep time is driving me insane. But you can stick them on the bottom of like a, a mason jar and you still get that, that texture to rinse your brushes off. So those are kind of helpful to, or handy too. Okay. My tea, I may as well drink it after the mess I made pouring it. I spilled this all. It's an herbal tea. It's really red and I spilled it all over the, the kitchen while I was pouring it. I'm, I'm one of the most graceful people you'll meet. Okay. So this is the transparent mixing white and I'm starting to get in some of these details. And I don't wanna thin it too much with water. It'll be too translucent, you won't see anything. I just need enough water that it's going to flow. If you have not already, make sure to check out our moderator's channels, jo Joseph, and Nick Edgar both have channels here on YouTube, art channels, and Kyle has an aquarium channel. But make sure to tell them thank you. They help me so, so much. Plus they've got cool channels, so. There's that. So see how this starts to look like it's, it almost looks like an oil painting with how blended this is. And it's just from layering. I can't, it's not typically, I mean, you can get it to look that blended in the first layer. It's a lot harder. It's easier just to keep layering like this. That is the word of the day, layer. Or the word of every day with me. I say it a lot. Bonnie said, so you go fishing and you pull up a red fish. However, when the fish is in the water, it's bluish. If they're only meant to be in the water, are they red or blue? Discuss. See, I don't get into theology of stuff because it doesn't matter. All I know is if I paint it out of water, it's going to be one color. If I paint it in the water, it'll be a different. If I paint it in the water where there was a filter on the camera that took the reference photo, yet again, a different color. Here, how's that? Which one is it when the filter's on the camera? It's funny, it kind of reminds me of a lot of the discussions that people would get in with art. They would debate, like, is it this word or this word? Which word is, is the most important? Would you call this color this color or this color? I don't care. I just know how to make that color. It makes no difference to me what you call it. I'm not, I, I'm not really, I've never really gotten into the debating of stuff. I used to see that years ago. I was on, I posted on Wet Canvas and you'd see these debates on things. And I'm like, that just doesn't interest me. I'd rather go paint. What was the other big one a few years back, that dress? Is it this color or that color? I don't know, but I can tell you how to mix the color. Um, the Down on the Farm studio said, studio and office sounds great. Is putting the fish in your office wise? You, if you add some chicken perches, assistant toys, it'll become the critter playroom <laughs> distractions galore. Well, yeah, chicken can't be in the office much when I'm working because he makes too much noise. He wants to, if I start talking, he gets excited. And he wants to talk too. It's adorable not practical but yeah the fish will be fine and i won't like there's no painting in there so there would be no chemicals or anything um i couldn't put either of them in my main studio but i figure i will spend the majority of my time because of so much time editing video i spend most of my time in there so it'd be really nice to see them there especially having a house payment i'm gonna need to work even more Miriam said, great tip. Thanks. You are welcome. Oops, there. That just scrolled too far. Bonnie says, touche. <laughs> Miriam said, mason jars with a thumbs up. Mason jars are cool. And we've got Kyle who's threatening people who don't thumbs up the video. <laughs> So that's when I miss when I'm not paying attention to chat, huh? The moderators are threatening people. Oh, what is this? This is here. That one goes up. 
this is, there we go. That's the line I'm looking for. I was missing something there. <laughs> Nick says without, uh, or Kyle says, all I know is there are about 140 people who haven't hit like yet. So Nick and I are coming up for you. Nick says without mercy. Then we've got Joseph. I'm a pacifist. Wow. Miriam said redfish, blue fish. Wasn't that a Dr. Seuss book? I think there were eggs involved that were green too. Um, let's see. Sarah said, well, Lisa, thank you for spending time on here tonight. You're having your house painted. That's cool. Outside or inside. I don't have a house yet. We just bought dirt. So there's no house yet. We haven't even met with the design team. We're having a house built, but it won't be done until like winter. So not yet. Cal says he's only suggesting a course of action. Oh my gosh. You guys are funny. Now, see how when I come back through with the lights, because I went so dark initially, how well they're standing out. And it'll stand out even more because, again, that other flower, the next one will come out this way. So, again, just look at those abstract shapes. Don't look at it as a flower. It doesn't look like a flower <laughs> at all. Uh, Phyllis said, what style of house did you choose? I don't know what you would call styles. It's a one story. Um, I don't know how you call style. It has a lot of windows. That was what was important to me. <laughs> that is not helpful at all, is it? Amanda said, completely random, but I have four parakeets. I never use OMS around them, but are they safe around paint? I wouldn't put them around paint. I don't, like even acrylics, I really don't like my birds around. Yeah, probably fine around acrylics. Definitely not airbrushing, just because of the the particles in the air but I don't like to risk it now keep in mind I am over the top paranoid about stuff so there's that but I just don't risk it um the acrylic paint once I put the lid on it I mean this dries right away they can come in the room when the paint's not open and wet you know when I put the lid on my palette and this portion it will be dry right away they can come in here but while I'm painting I don't like them in the room I don't I, I'm just too too paranoid if something happened because I wasn't being careful. I would just feel so horrible. So um, I just choose not to. Definitely not with the OMS. Because OMS, even though it's odorless, it's still toxic. And so I don't want them breathing that in. It's not like, and people are thinking, well, then why do you breathe it in? People aren't as sensitive as birds. Birds are so over the top sensitive. Certain birds worse than others. Like canaries are one of the worst. Little guys, they're super sensitive. Like even certain... Um, cookware that you have like nonstick cookware when that heats to a certain point thanks Kyle when that heats to a certain point it can uh, actually kill the birds so you want to be careful with I mean birds are way way more sensitive than people are so yeah um uncle said ranch story or ranch house one story normally okay we'll go with that i have no idea oh yeah i didn't even notice that joseph said he wrote pass a fist not pacifist just to be clear oh my gosh <laughs> thank you heather heather said just to start for the house money <laughs> thank you so much i so need it that is scary to know you're like i mean it's one thing to have rent and it's like being committed to a house and then the upkeep of the house. I'm a little terrified. That's super scary. So yes, thank you. That helps. Yeah, and Amanda, the acrylic paint is probably fine. I mean, when I was a kid, I know that I painted in my room before I really realized that some of these have fumes. Because acrylics, a lot of people think that acrylics have, no, they're, they're non-toxic, but they're still a gas that they put off that's not like super, I just don't trust around birds. So, you know, just being a bit more cautious. It probably, you're. I'm sure you're going to find people go, oh, I paint around my birds all the time and it's fine. Uh, you just have to decide what you're comfortable with, I guess. Now, look how many colors are in this white flower. It's so easy to look at a flower like this and go, oh, it's white. But it's really not. It's very little white.
these are fun to paint too because they are so random. Like you, they're very forgiving. If you end up, you could actually leave an entire flower petal out and it would still look like a flower. So that's really helpful. And there goes my monitor to sleep again. How much you want to bet after the live stream? I completely forget to reset the, the what time or how long it takes to go for the monitor to go to sleep until next week when I'm dealing with the same thing. There's a chunk of paint on here that does not cause me problems. There we go. Um, Cassie said, can you give some tips on how to work the color wheel? That always confused me. The only thing that I ever use the color wheel for, for students, because they'll have like color mixing guides. If you have this color, you get this color. I, like you said, it's confusing. And I always found that it was more confusing to the student than the only thing that I really do use the color wheel for is this straight across. There's your complementary color. You mix those two colors, you're going to get a brownish tone. That's about the extent of what I've ever used it for, for teaching purposes. The color wheel, I mean, they have fancy ones. You turn on and it's like, you can see what colors you'll get if you mix different colors. Most people, I think that it gets overwhelming. I think for most people, if you're using a color wheel to, wheel to fix up, fi figure out colors, you're probably a beginner painter. And I think that it would be better in your case to just limit the colors you use. Get a basic red, blue, green, um, yellow, purple dioxazine. Usually I have students buy versus try to mix. Um, brown, white, and black. Mix what you need from there. And maybe you're not going to get the exact color you want, depending on the, the tone of red you have, the tone of blue. But you're going to learn more from color doing that, then you will try to figure out a color wheel. That's just the way that I've, I've taught for years. Um, Kyle said, lots of people don't do water changes for months or God forbid years. The fish may be alive, but it doesn't make it right. Yeah, it's saying, yes, that's actually a really good example. Kind of like betas in a bowl for the, their entire life or in vases, glass vases that people keep them in with like flowers or plants sticking out of the top. I mean, yeah, they can live that way, but it's not recommended. My dog could also live in a dark closet if I throw food in. Wouldn't recommend it. So I'll get this shadow color here. Um, Shannon said, I recently bought both of Aliona's colored pencil books. Put them aside until I was ready to read them. Now I cannot find, oh no, find the darn things. Any clue on what I did with them? I'll find them someday. If it helps, mine are right there. I know where my, I can find mine. I No, I cannot help you. Maybe we'll, I'll ask mine if they know where yours are. How's that? We'll ask them later. Um, I hope you find them. Those are good books. Mary, I actually have one. Do I have both of them in hard copy? I think I only... No, maybe I do have them. Yes, I do have them both in hard copy because Aliona signed one of them for me. Um, but I had bought them on digital. That's why most of my books, almost all of my books are digital because I lose everything. That and I don't want to store them, but I recommend the digital copies. Um, we see Miriam said, get Kyle to put the threat fist to your sleeping monitor. Yes. Seriously. Speaking of, I should move it so it doesn't fall back asleep. How do I feel about the craftsman style design? Love the flank Lloyd Wright's unison. I don't even know what any of those words you just said, meant. It was kind of funny shopping for houses because, or, or even like going through the loan process, they're asking me questions and I'm like, I don't know what these words mean. I'm so lost on all of this right now. Um, the it's a it's a Pulte home is the the maker the builder that I went with if that helps. Down on the farm studio said type yourself a little note for what to do for live streams. Print it out on collared stock so it folds a little a little sign. Lose lose the sign over the week and start all over or skip that last part. <laughs> Pretty much how my, yes, that sounds about right. Either way, I'm going to lose it. Um, let's see. Adding the transparent mixing wipes to some yellow. Let's see if I can start brightening these a bit. And I'm going to have to add highlights of brighter yellow over them again.
And I think one of the things that can be so scary when painting, especially a flower like this that has so many shadows, it's scary to have that many. I mean, it's so high contrast, but that high contrast will make a really big difference. If you guys saw, I posted a photo of it on Instagram, the Patreon live stream that we did. I can't reach it easily, but the intense that we did in live stream arose super high contrast, but the high contrast is what made it work. So trying to get over the fear of getting those darks dark, getting those lights light enough, it'll make all the difference in the world in your work. PZ Cherokee said, I'm so glad someone else is saying it. I think the fish bowls like, look like a prison cell. Yeah, they're not good. And especially when you see a beta swim around in a bigger tank. Like mine's only, I think it's a four gallon, about a four gallon tank. And even that, I mean, it's a decent sized tank and it's a planted tank. So it has all the little hiding spots and stuff. It's still, when you see how active they are, I'm like, oh, maybe I want to go even bigger for him. They actually really enjoy all that swim space. It's really fun to watch them swim around too. Really fun fish. So much personality. I'm actually editing my video on that guy um, currently. It's about halfway edited. But the oil painting one that we started, gosh, weeks ago, um, I should have that up on Friday or Saturday, Sunday, somewhere like that. I should have the video. That this weekend, that video will be up. It's been wonderful to be able to edit videos again. That is too dark here. I think too with the bettas that one of the, the problems people don't realize they're supposed to be in bigger bowls. I mean, I didn't. I you always see them at pet stores. You see people own them in these little bowls. Um, so it's not like I I think everyone's trying to be like mean to the fish. It's just that they don't know. And especially if you go into like a petco. I used to work at petco years and years ago. And the I remember a, a girl who was supposed to be their specialist, their expert. Her thing was, well, they live in rice puddles in the wild, so they're fine. They they prefer a small bowl. They don't want a big tank. That's what she would say. They don't want to be in a bigger tank. They want to be in a small thing because it rice puddles. They're only in rice puddles part of the year. That's actually not how they live their entire life. So that's not totally true. Yes, they can because they're real weird with the way they breathe. They have like a lung there. It's not a normal fish. But um, so yeah, they can, but they shouldn't. That's not a good idea. But I mean, they they would tell people this. And so I totally get where people... Um, that's not the tube I need. Where I don't think that it's just that people are being like irresponsible other than not researching stuff it's that they're being told that by some of the well by petco um so yeah hopefully more people there's a lot of videos out there hopefully people will learn and get their fish a bigger house i need white i'll be right back yeah even mine i'm like the four gallon seemed big and now when i see how active he is I'm like, yeah i want bigger he needs a bigger house when that'll happen i don't know Miriam said, um, use those color wheels when I first started painting, back painting, but just putting out paint and mixing them is when I learned the most. Exactly. Always learning, never stop learning. Yes, that is exactly it. Just put the paint out and experiment with it. It seems scary, but you're going to learn so much more from that than being afraid to make a mistake. If you're sitting there afraid to make mistakes, you're not moving forward. Go make the mistake. That's how you're going to learn. Those mistakes are the best thing you can do. I'm painting this white on there pretty bright. I'll probably have to, because if my bright, if my white is not bright enough or as bright as I want, that means the dark next to it isn't dark enough. So I'll have to make some adjustments there. Oh, that's that. Oh yeah, this is this flower. I'm like mixing the flowers now. It doesn't go there. I mean, it does. I just didn't need to do it yet. Bonnie said, my favorite art teacher many years ago gave me the two best lessons I ever learned. Increase contrast and fill the paper or canvas. Don't draw a little picture in a huge space. Yes. That's a, that's a big deal where I've seen that where it's like someone will draw a portrait and the head's like this little teeny thing at the bottom and there's all this extra space up top. Yes. Fill the canvas. Good tips. And of course, like you said, the can the contrast, big, big deal.
this is the stage that starts getting really fun for me where it starts to look like a flower. It starts to come together. Little details. Kimberly said, do, do a painter's hat on the crab, do a painter's, oh, I'm not reading that right. Do a painter's hat on the crab and make him hold a brush and a palette. Hey, new theme. That would be actually really cute. Um, PZ Cherokee said, if you could have any supernatural power, what would it be? Oh, that's a good one. I mean, you have the typical to be able to fly. I think it would be to not have to sleep. Is that a supernatural power? Just to have energy and be awake all the time. I think that would be my my supernatural power I would want. You could get so much more done. Oh, yeah, actually, Joseph, that worked. Time and space manipulation. So that's kind kind of what ended up with the same result I want. I want more time to get stuff done. I'm always behind on everything. Ask the patrons who are waiting for their postcards. Although I did just order February, March, and April, so I'll get those out. They should be to me within a week or so. I need to order um, stamps too. But I will be able to get caught up on those soon. Always behind on everything. Um, the Don down on the forum studio said, every time I paint, I hear you. Are your darks dark enough and your lights light enough? I must say that like 20 times in every video. I say it. Oh, it's like my everything. I should make, I need to make new merch stuff. I should make that the thing on the merch. Are your darks dark enough? You're, no, someone would misunderstand that and not know it was about painting and think it was like being insensitive about something or another. So maybe that shouldn't be the I like the idea, but now that I think about it, I can see where someone would take that wrong. Um, or there we go from Aaron Blaze. I love Aaron Blaze. If you've not watched him, he does a lot. Of, well, he does a lot of mediums, but he is so, he can actually teach you a lot about light too. Like um, he has some really good, I followed some of his digital painting tutorials. I've got a bunch of his um, digital paintbrushes for Photoshop. Great videos. And Bonnie says, awesome power. Yeah. Can you imagine how much we could do if we didn't need to sleep or wouldn't get tired? I think it's not just that I don't want to sleep. I already don't sleep, sleep a lot. I want to not be tired. Now, once I get the other flowers in, I will likely come back through and make additional adjustments on this, but it gives me a good start. Let's get some really darks in here. I'm mixing my magenta. Actually, I think that's deep violet. I always call that color magenta, but I think the actual name is deep violet. My burnt sienna, mix those two. Lisa, uh, or Christy said, Lisa, color and light book is only 17 on Prime. Nice, not bad, totally worth it. Heather said, how much time should I expect to spend on art business related tasks as opposed to creating my art? I'm just beginning to sell my art and ultimately want to make this full time. I would say I'm about half and half and my monitor went to sleep. I'd say about like the first half of the day, maybe I spend more on the business side of things. I'm not sure because, you know, emails and getting the email newsletter written and all, you know, all of that stuff. Um, I, I would say I'm about, I, I do about half and half. So it's kind of like having two, two full-time jobs. The first half of my day is doing that. And then the second half of my day is painting. But my second half of the day, I don't normally paint for like a full eight hours. So I guess it's not full, full, two full-time. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do far more than eight. So I guess that's not true. See, now I can start defining things and sharpening up edges. Yeah, I still need to type art to, um, to install my Photoshop brushes on the new computer from, from Aaron. That's one of the things I've not done yet. I realized that when I was trying to edit um, the thumbnails for this video, I don't have most of my stuff. I was trying to erase something and I didn't have the right brush. I need to do that. Gail said, my superpower would be 
not requiring sleep or food. It takes up so much time doing both. I just live off string cheese. So, you know, it, I don't waste a whole lot of time there. <laughs> the food thing's easy enough for me. That is not nutritious. That's not a healthy diet. Kyle said, I thought you just said stand there and stare. At I thought you just stand there and stare at your tank all day. <sighs> yeah, kind of. That's why I need to put the tank in the office. So at least I can work while I stand and stare at my tank all day. I do spend it. Well, the tank during the day, the lights on my tank don't come on until 6 p.m. So, because I'm up all le at night, so I want the tank on at night. So, my lights are on from 6 p.m. till 2, no, 3 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I don't know. I don't math. Um, so, <laughs> it's dark during the day, so I can't go stare at them. I do. I do sometimes anyway. Okay, more and more details. Let's see. I need some more blue. Another tip, don't look at something and just jump to black as your shadow. Try shading things. In this case, I'm using some blue, but try purple. I use a lot for shadow, purples and blues, sometimes magenta, but don't just assume I need a shadow. So I must use, you know, obviously black paint. More often than not, black's not going to be the, the, the answer. Sometimes it is, but usually you're going to want to use some other colors. It'll look better. Now, another thing I could have done on this one is painted all in just black and white and then glaze the color over it. So all I have to worry about my, is my values. That definitely would be probably an easier way to do this. I may do that for some of the other. I've got enough flowers on there. We can try that on some of them as well. Lots of different ways to get to the same end. Um, Christine, Christiane said, I know that you do a lot of work in color pencil. I was wondering, do you have any tips on how to keep pencil dust from getting on parts of the image you've already colored? I keep, well, I work upright. I'm not working flat. So that's part of the thing. My, if I have any pencil dust, it's falling down, but I also keep a piece of glassine under my hand so that I'm not like hitting where there's dust and then smudging it. It also keeps the acid from my hand from getting on the paper. So that's a big deal. But the working upright in my case keeps that from happening. The other thing that you'll want to do, let me rinse that so I can show you. I think I've got it right here. Get one of these. It's a drafting brush. Um, this one's made by Stedler. And you're just going to, if you're working flat, you're just going to wipe off your eraser or your little pencil lines. And this doesn't create, like if you did it with your hand, not only are you getting the acid from your, your hand on the, or oils on, from your hand onto your paper, but you're going to smudge things. This isn't going to smudge. Use this regularly. When I used to work flat, I used this all the time to wipe any like little dust bits away. Super, super helpful. If you go to the art supply store, it's usually over by their drafting supplies, but that's that's how I do that. Um, let's see. PZ Cherokee said, does your tank heavily impact your light bill or have you noticed any difference? No difference. It's a small tank though. And it did back when in, when was that? The early, the late nineties, like I, my original tank back years ago, my first saltwater tank was set up in 95 and I had it for about 10 years, 10, 11 years, 12 years. I don't know. I don't math, but that one, when it was the first, yes, those lights went through pretty quickly because those were, I forget what the first light was, some kind of fluorescent. And then I had, I didn't have coral, so I didn't have to have anything good. Then I had, I want to say it was T5s for the next one. Those ate up the electric bill, that and the filters, that, that definitely the heater, the everything that went, my, that affected my, my electricity quite a bit. This tank now, a lot of the, the tanks use LEDs and those don't eat up a lot of electricity, not compared to what we used to. Like some people used to have metal halides and different things to grow coral, um, before we had LEDs and those, oh my gosh, those burn through electricity. Like you wouldn't believe they create a lot of heat too. So no, I don't, this tank, no difference, um, at all. Be, again, the LEDs just don't eat up a lot. Um, and it's a small tank anyway. Art Advantage says, I have never noticed you doing collab videos. Is there a reason for this? Or you just have too much else going on to fit in a collab? I just have too much going on. Like I've talked with my friend Lena, um, Lena Danny here on YouTube. We've talked about doing things, not gotten around to it. I've talked to a few people that in, had plans. I did some stuff with, actually Kyle um, works at Gloss Aquatics. That's my local fish store. I did some stuff with them, um, but that's not, you know, little things here and there. But yeah, it's a time issue to, to coordinate and time things. That's all it comes down to. I have a lot of people I'd love to collaborate with. Um, I'd like to do some more with Unmasked Art, Will Stoller, um, Sheldine. Uh, gosh, I can just keep listing all the people that I want to do more collaborations or people I've talked about doing more with and we just, time-wise. 
Collaborations are a lot of fun, though. I definitely want to do more. Um, actually, the Frugal Crafter, we had talked about doing one, or because I've got to show my studio anyway, and she was doing a video. I think I missed that because I didn't get around to it. But yeah, um, Miriam said, did you name your escape artist Snail Houdini? No, he is, uh, why is the word not coming to me? Stan Hill is his name. Um, let's see. Oop, that scroll. Breaking Foundation said, wondering, have you ever tried mineral paper? I have not. I bought some and I don't like the way any media works on it. I don't know what works with it. I don't even know what it is. I have not heard. Mineral paper? Wait. Did I read that? Mineral paper. I do not know what that is. It sounds terrifying. So here, where my again, my brights aren't bright enough, all I want to do is come back through, darken up the darks next to it, and then the bright suddenly is super bright. Because you'll get to a point when you're painting and you're like, it's white and it won't go lighter, but it doesn't stand out enough. That's because the darks next to it aren't dark enough. And I'm going to tone some of this down too with the raw umber or burnt sienna because this is getting a bit more blue than I want. I don't want this many blue flowers. It's not going to work too well with the room that's going in. It looks pretty. I mean, on its own, it's pretty, but again, I've got to keep in mind, it's supposed to go in a specific room. So there's that. Stacy said, I just finished your roses on Patreon in colored pencil. I wanted to know how to sign my name on the piece. Uh, I just use a pencil. Um, if it's, it depends on, I'm not sure which roses you did, but if it's a light background, then I use a dark pencil. If it's a dark pe background, I use a light wax based pencil and just sign it in one of the bottom corners typically. Okay. What else was I doing? Oh yeah. I want to tone this down. Let's see what happens when I just glaze a little bit. This guy's pretty opaque. So I'm going to thin that out. That is my raw sienna. We'll just pull, there we go. That works. Let it go over. And it's going to turn to kind of a muddy color going over the blue, but that works for this. I don't want to do it on all the blue, just part of it. And I still have to define some of the darks a bit better. It's paper made from rocks. Yeah, I have not tried that. Oh, Nick said it's is sanded paper maybe what they're referring to as mineral paper i don't know is sanded paper made from rocks i have no idea shannon said any chance we'll get some graphite soon i love watching your graphite work yes i actually want to do an intro to graphite like basic all the the, the graphite basics because i've never i don't think i've ever done one one of those so yeah that's coming up on my very soon very soon i will be doing that okay liner brush lost you where did you go oh there you are yeah i'm not sure what i'm going to do in graphite but i need it to be a project that begin ah, there goes my monitor that beginners can follow along with like a good beginner type project that is not dark enough what I really need to do is stop being lazy and grab black and just mix a touch with it for a couple of these shadows. But, you know, the lazy is strong in me. I'll do it later. And I needed to find two. Some of my orange, actually, that's what I need to work on now. Some of these oranges are really not as defined. So I'm going to brighten them up a bunch and then tone them back down with orange. They are not standing out as much as they should. Gail said, I'd love to see you collaborate with Warren Keys Emporium. Actually, yeah, I should talk to her because I am, um, I bought the cutest little, um, it's all, she calls them love bugs. So I ordered one of those guys she's making for me. I should paint him in like a scene. That would be so much fun. A cute little surreal one. Tasha said, with a name like Sandhill, he surely has a monocle, obviously. Well, one antenna because the beta keeps eating them. Maybe that's why he keeps trying to escape. He doesn't like the beta. Although I think the beta stopped doing that. So maybe not so much. Um, the original Yupo paper, paper was made from rocks. Interesting. Now it's just plastic, isn't it? 
Okay, what was I doing? Lost, oh yeah, I've got to lighten things up a bit. I'm gonna just I'll add some white and then bleach titanium white. I'm just not getting these defined as much as they need to be. So let's lighten them a bunch and then go on top of them with the orange. Okay, now that can dry and it can make them much better to find. Okay, just waiting on that a second. If I wasn't lazy, yeah, the lazy, it's a thing. Problem sometimes, I could dry that with hair dryer and speed things along. Um, what color am I going to, I think I'm just going to go straight with orange first. That's probably dry enough that the orange will stick. I'll still have to tone it down, but let's start with the bright. Actually, that won't even need to be toned down that much. That works. I'll need to add some yellow. And see how I can still, the yellow, it's so bright. If I would have just put the yellow on the dark that I had there, it wouldn't have shown up. Okay, Rachel said that the Yupo paper, it is, now it is plastic and it has a fe similar feel to the rock. Then in that case, the only thing, at least for the Yupo that I liked it for, were the Winsor Newton pigment markers. Loved those on that, but I never found anything else I really, I tried colored pencil. I even tried colored pencil over the Yupo paper, or over the, um, Windsor Newton Higby markers, it just didn't stick very well. So not my preference. And then again, I'll come back through now with shadows. Nanner said, do you, do you make a video of all your artwork or do you have a private collection? Yeah, everything's in video. The only thing right now that I haven't recorded, but I am recording it, just not for my channel, uh, are some things I'm gonna be doing for Faber-Castell, but they're like little quick things. That's about it, everything else. And even that I am recording, it's just for not my channel. So um, yeah, everything gets recorded. I don't have time to do stuff in addition to um, the only, well, okay. Exception to that would be playing around with Photoshop. When I first was learning to do digital painting with Photoshop, I have a few paintings that I did that way that I didn't record. I wish I would have, but I was just kind of experimenting. And so I didn't record that, but normally, yes. Um, yes, Miriam, I'm going to have one, two, there's four going across here, one down by the octopus's leg, and then two up near the top. So yeah, I'll have lots of flowers. I won't be doing them all tonight. This is about as far as I'm going to get tonight. Bonnie said, got to go to bed, Eastern time, but thanks for tonight. Thanks for joining. Good night. I have many hours before I get to go to bed. Um, let's see.
But see what I mean? Again, going back to those layers, look at how as I keep adding, keep building, it'll completely change the way it looks from what it did when I started. Your first layers, they're going to look terrible and that's okay. They're supposed to. Using a bit of transparent mixing white there so it's not too terribly bright. Now let's come back through with the liner brush and straight titanium white. Get those highlights back in there. That went wrong. What is this? This highlight doesn't go there. That goes there. My petal's not in the same place or the right place. So let's pull that out. Where was I? I lost the petal somewhere. Here. This is my problem. There we go. Now this side's going to be really blurry because until I get the other ones to create the contrast from this one, it's just kind of a what is going on in this section mess. So I'm not going to worry about that just yet. That's a little bold. Too much. I'll tone that down. So that again is another area that is not standing out light enough. So I'm going to come back through with some darker colors. Starving Artist Collective said, art business question. What is your main income streams? YouTube, Patreon, painting, or print sales? Meant to have more than one, but what have you found to be the best mix? YouTube and Patreon, that combination works the best for me. It's not that most of my income comes from YouTube. It's that YouTube, those videos build Patreon. So like they both work together. Um, that is, ah, my screen just went to sleep again. That's definitely been the best, the most consistent for me. Thank you, Uncle 57. Is it, keep it up, young lady. Looks great. Thank you so much. But yeah, the, for the business, um, yes, like you said, have as many income streams as possible. But for me, Patreon and and YouTube makes works the best. And that makes sense. I mean, I've been teaching for 20 years. So it makes sense that that was a good, you know, more, I had my more experience doing that than, than selling the paintings. So that worked out really well. But um, that's as far as I'm going to get on that one. To, well, for now, I'll keep painting tonight. But we'll go ahead and stop there for that. And I'll, I'll get caught up on a couple of questions before we wrap that. So yeah, Patreon and YouTube. Patreon by far the most. I would say like one tenth of what I make is through YouTube. The rest is Patreon. And then of course, prints. Prints are just... Some months I'll make a decent amount from that or from like Amazon affiliate links that sometimes will, but not a lot. Like those are just like little things that all add up. Um, selling originals. I don't push my originals hard enough. I'm really bad about that. I have some friends that are, I'm going to 
talk to them about doing that for me because I just don't. Um, I don't even tell people like, yeah, I, very rarely do I point out when I have something available for sale. So that's something I, I need to work on. But yeah, Patreon and YouTube for me has worked out really well. Great combination. Um, again, thank you, Uncle Tom. Thank you for everyone who donated with Super Chat. It really means a lot. It, it helps a lot too. Um, Ursi said, thanks for the wonderful night of art and entertainment. Loves it. <laughs> thanks for joining. Um, we've got Fiddle Jewel said, dropping in from Niagara Falls, Canada this week. Love it, Lisa. Looks fun. Thank you. I think Niagara Falls sounds like more fun. Heather said, night everyone as usual watching the stream has soothed my soul and I'm ready for sleep. Good night, Heather. Thanks for joining. So yeah, with this guy, I'm just going to go back through and kind of clean things up a little bit more. And I've definitely got more highlights to pull in, but I'm going to wait until I get these other flowers in so that I can balance my my values and everything. I mean, it's it's mostly mapped out. So once everything else is in, I can wait. It'll be way easier for me to judge those values because right now I've got this really light flower up against the dark of the clarinet and then this background. Once those light flowers are in, I may realize I need to go lighter or darker, but I need those flowers in there so that I can make that judgment call. So right now we're... We're close enough for that. Okay, Kyle, you're just weird. Don't be weird. Unless it's Anna on your account. Just weird. Um, yeah, we're, let's see, we've got three more minutes. If you guys have some more questions, we can wrap up with, with that. Oh, I still have my Patreon logo up from the Patreon video. Sorry, that actually should be like my website or something, but whatever. Um, whoops. So let's see. Yeah, I think we're pretty much good. I need to go feed fish. I'm having fun feeding the new little fish. He doesn't understand to grab food from the top like the clownfish do. So, you know, got to teach him how to eat. Loving the, thank you, pallet junkie. The lively little shrimp's probably going to be moved though. I'm not sure where he's going to go. I think I want to keep a shrimp in this painting, but he, I rushed him. And I didn't plan it out very well. And he just blends in too much with that background. So he needs to go somewhere where he's going to stand out a little bit more. That's not the location. So I'm going to put some flowers over him. He's going to get covered some. So yeah, he's got to move somewhere else. He In the video, what you're seeing up close, it works. But in the, the painting as a whole, and here's the painting as a whole, it just does, he's getting lost in, in that background. So I need to, where did it go? Here you go. That's what it looks like as the whole. And you can see now when you look at everything together, that shrimp is just being, he, he's a lot, he's, you don't see him. So yeah, he's got to get moved somewhere else. I just haven't decided where that's going to be yet. Um, let's see. Where do I so, see myself in five years? Well, hopefully in my new house. Um, with a studio and office. My goals in life to have a studio, separate studio and office and in my own bedroom with a bed and not have to sleep on my futon in the living room, which is where I've been sleeping for years. So that's exciting. I have high goals. I get to have a grown up bed. Um, yeah, that's, can I zoom out? Oh, that's okay. I got that for you. Um, I, I want to keep growing YouTube. I want to do more videos with YouTube too, like more artist vlogs, more just encouraging other artists, motivational stuff. I want to do more stuff like that. I also want to find, and see the city I'm moving to is really small. Well, right now it's building. It will be big. So I need to find a gallery. I don't know if that's something they'll end up having there or maybe start an art association in the area, but I would like to get involved more with other artists locally too. So that would be cool. Um, oops. Down on the farm studio said, do you most, mostly or just about every time draw your outlines first and then paint color or do you ever start painting? I pretty much always draw in at least something loose first. Otherwise, if I just start painting, I never get my proportions right. I have to draw so that I can erase and fix things if things don't go go well. So yeah. Nick said, would you consider doing work a workflow video on your video editing process? That would be good now that my computer could handle that. Yes, I absolutely would and hopefully will. Kimberly said, how will you see it finished? Um, I think that more of when will you see it finished? You'll see it here on YouTube when it's done. And of course on Patreon, or not Patreon. Well, yeah, Patreon too. Patreon will be this weekend, but, or next, early next week. I, I forget when things happen, when things go live. But um, Instagram, I'll post the finished painting there as well. Um, let's see. Nanner said, tips for a large background in colored pencil. My next, oh, that just scrolled too far. 
whoops, where did that go? My next project, patience and coffee. Those are my big tips. Don't rush it. Like, I mean, the paper type you, you choose will make a difference, but color pencil is slow. Go into it knowing that and go into it. Like I would set goals of, I just, if you're working really large, like I only need this like four or five square inches done in one night. I don't need to get the whole thing done in one night. Otherwise you're going to rush. It's gonna, going to look terrible. Um, colored pencil is just a slow, slow medium. Another option would be to airbrush it. I'll, there's a, a colored pencil piece I'm planning coming up, another surreal one with a cat and corals. And that background, I, it, because of the size I want to work to get the detail in the coral, I've got to work big. But the background, I am not wanting to do that in colored pencil. So I'm going to airbrush my background on that one. So that's also an option. You could use watercolor or something like that as well. But patience, if you're going to do it in colored pencil, like give yourself a, a, like these little mini goals of, I just need to get this small area done tonight. I don't need to get the whole background done. Otherwise you start rushing and it starts looking like crap. Um, let's see. Thanks, Miriam. Gail said, I missed it. What is your new fish edition? He, he is a fire fish. Little red fire fit. Well, half red, half white. He's adorable. Um, he's doing really well. And he has his little cave that's his house. So cute. Lynn said, looks awesome. You are my inspiration. Love watching your videos. Thank you, Lynn. Um, Tasha said, have you ever heard or tried to use white watercolor ground fix errors in colored pencil on watercolor paper? No, because a watercolor, that's not going to be archival. You can't use water-based mediums are things intended for water-based products on top of a wax or oil-based pencil and have it be archival over time and that's going to chip and flake off so no that i do not recommend instead there's a product by russian pencil if you go to russianpencil.com you can get it from delta art in canada dick blick here in the u.s um who is it in the uk why can't i think of the name right now jackson art I think is in the UK. I forget who has it on Australia, but it's called Touch Up Texture Titanium. And you, it's two products they use. One is a little bottle called Touch Up Texture. Another is a little container called Titanium White. And you mix that together. And then I take a liner brush, like the one I've been using tonight, something like this. Oh, you won't see that there. Um, something like this. Wrong side. You don't even put my hand in front of it this way. That's helpful. But I don't know if you can see that. It's going to focus. But it's just a little liner brush and you can paint on that way. And that product's archival. It's intended for colored pencil. But watercolor browns, not intended for it. So it's not going to be archival. So no, don't that I wouldn't recommend. Um, yeah, we are good. We're done for the night. Thank you guys so much for joining. Again, thank you to my mods. Make sure you thank them and check out their channels linked in the video description. You can, if you want to post some of your artwork for everyone to see, we've got our art group. That link is in the video description as well. And next week, I have no idea what we're doing. It'll be something. I'll see you guys then. Bye.